is really tough. When the environment turns against one of your favorite companies, take Magellan Midstream Partners, MMP. It's a pipeline master limited partnership that stores, transports, and distributes petroleum products. Last month, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, real head scratcher, made a tax ruling that's going to hurt many pipeline MLPs. And while Magellan said this ruling would be immaterial, the market had concerns about it. Investors are worried this ruling is going to make it more difficult for MLPs to raise their distributions. And for many investors, that's what these stocks are about. On top of that, a few weeks ago, Magellan announced that they won't be moving ahead with the construction of a new oil pipeline in Texas because there wasn't enough demand from shippers. That really surprised me, given that this is supposed to connect the Red Hot Permian Basin to the Gulf Coast. If not going to build the pipeline, well, let's say as rapidly as we expected, maybe there's not enough demand, so the stock should be less attractive. Is that true? We'll both cause the stock to get whacked. You know what, though? We're eager to give companies a chance to tell us how the market might be wrong especially given the company's terrific balance sheet and best-in-practice structure. So let's check in with Mike Mears. He's the chairman, president, and CEO of Magellan Midstream Partners to hear the story of this great company. Mr. Mears, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you. Hi, Jim. All right, Mike, I'm trying to understand. Oil's at 62.63. Magellan Midstream has got the best structure of all of them. You're the most conservative. You have the least debt. You've got your biannual annual, annual meeting. What will you say to allay fears? Well, we got a couple messages we're gonna okay. we're gonna convey tomorrow. First of all, our business hasn't changed. There's been a lot of things that have happened over the last two years, but when we set our goals for the next two years, we accomplished all of them. If you look at the last five years, we've almost doubled our cash flow and we've issued no equity. As we look forward, we have one point three billion dollars of new construction projects developing, and we're still not gonna issue any equity. We have best in class balance sheet. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a low, uh, we have a good coverage ratio. Right. And uh, we, have a, we have a corporate governance structure. Again, a lot of the problems in this space have been concerned with governance. Right. We have a governance structure that's as close to a C-Corp governance structure as you can get. We have uh, publicly elected directors. Right. We have best in class balance sheet, good distribution growth. And the FERC issue isn't going to affect us significantly. Okay. Well, let, let's try to understand this. It, it, how is it possible that a group, you're, by the way, yours is one of the better performers group. How is it possible that a group could go so out of favor, despite the fact that we don't have enough pipelines in this country to bring oil to market? Well, I think it's, it's a combination of things. And, and we think we've been drugged down with the group and with kind of the baby thrown out with the bathwater. Okay, fair you enough. Know, we, if you look at some of the concerns with the group, it's with governance. There's, mm -hmm. some, so there's been some uh, poor governance choices made. Uh, but without IDRs, without a GP, we don't have that problem. Right. Uh, the structure, I, get, I think, again, is a problem. Balance sheet, you've, you've seen companies They're really stretched. stretch their Some balance sheet. Some of them sheet. really stretch, yours is not. We've maintained, even with significant growth, maintained our, cover, uh, our balance sheet at a low, below four times debt to EBITDA. Again, without issuing any equity, which we think is we're very proud of. Uh, and growth, I mean, a lot of companies, I think people are fearing that the growth is gone. We're, we have 8% growth uh, guidance this year. We have 5 to 8% for the next two years. That hasn't changed with the FERC right. ruling. And I think the FERC was the last straw but to but bring the market down. Let's talk about, I mean, like, you, it's <clears throat> President Trump, but this FERC ruling is anti-pipeline. Mike, it's anti-pipeline. There's no, there's no denying that. I'm not going to deny it. I, I, it caught the industry by surprise. The FERC set this up 15 years ago to allow MLPs to take a tax allowance. They changed that with this ruling. No one saw this coming, and so now there's been a significant, and the market didn't see it coming. Right. And so there's a significant negative bias. Can it be reversed, Mike? There's a chance it can be reversed. Nothing like this happens quick with the firm. Right. You know, we think there's some very good arguments why this is the wrong decision. Mm -hmm. But even if it's not reversed, its impact on Magellan is going to be minimal. Couldn't you still have the same posture about raising your distribution with or without the FERC ruling? Or is this curtail growth in joint ventures that we were looking for? Absolutely not. Our, our guidance is not changed at all. We don't anticipate having to drop our rates at all, uh, certainly for the next mm -hmm. two years. And then after that, we think if there is any drop, it's going to be very minimal. And so we're not concerned with the FERC ruling. Um, but, you know, the market is. But is and there as much demand as it used to be? You did back away from that one pipeline. We did. It's not because of lack of demand. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's a ex hyper-competitive market in the Permian right. right now. We had interest in our pipe. We just didn't have enough to pursue it. But the worst thing you can do in this market is overbuild. I mean, right. midstream space has a history of overbuilding. Right. We have two pipes out of the Permian today. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the last thing you want to do is build last one more than is actually needed. Right. It hurts all of them. Well, all I can tell you is, is that I did an analysis of the biggest 12, and yours is down the least, but it's down. I mean, maybe it is baby bath water. It makes the most sense. I can't explain it otherwise. We have to keep doing what we're doing. You have to we're stick focused by on on our our business plan, and it's worked in the past. It's going to work. Well, in the I future. appreciate you coming on. It's been tough to find people who will come on. I wish you best of luck at your analyst day. Thank That's you. Michael Muir. He's the chairman, president, and CEO of Magellan Midstream Partners. What a tough group, but best in show. We have money's back into the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.